Does all of the homeschool stuff just have you so overwhelmed? Well, today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys my top tips for organization in your homeschool. Okay, friends, if you know me, you know I love to organize. It's one of my favorite things. I thrive on it. My label maker is like my best friend. So I've got some tips for you. If you are struggling in organizing your homeschool stuff, because let's face it, there is a lot of stuff, then I got you covered and I'm gonna be sharing my best tips with you today on how to just keep all of that stuff from taking over your whole house. So my first tip is to identify your needs and set some goals. So start with a really big picture. So what do you want from your homeschool room? How do you want it to feel? How do you want it to function? What does your family need out of that space? So when I was creating our homeschool space, my primary goal was that I wanted it to be a place where I would have instant access to everything that I needed and also a place where my kids would feel at home and comfortable and cozy, that it would just be a peaceful atmosphere. But I'm sure you have different goals. You might have kids of a bunch of different ages, maybe some high schoolers. You need some individual spaces for everyone. You need it to function well for each individual student. Maybe you have a child with ADHD, and so maybe you need an environment that really minimizes distractions and promotes concentration. But once you have some goals in place, you will be better able to organize your space and you'll have a better understanding of what your needs are. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna organize your space and this is the fun part and the beauty of homeschooling is you can homeschool anywhere. So this can be your dining room table, this can be your front porch, this can be a coffee shop, you can have a designated homeschool room. We have done so many different things over the years. We started in our dining room. I literally took all of my china out of my china cabinets and made a homeschool room into our dining room. We did not have a lot of space in that house. And then when we moved to this house, we had a whole homeschool room, which worked out great for like a year. And then we realized that was not serving us well. So now we are back in the dining room. We have a great like built-in shelf now where we keep all of our supplies, but it has definitely changed and evolved over the years. And it probably will for you too. But wherever you choose to homeschool, you want to have a dedicated space for your homeschool stuff for all of the books, all of the supplies, all of the different things that you need for your homeschooling. You wanna have a place to organize that stuff. This is gonna help your sanity. It's gonna help your kids be able to find things. It's gonna help everyone all around. If you have a really nice, tidy and neat homeschooling space where you keep all of your stuff. But this could literally be like an extra closet. This could be some kind of built-in shelf. This could be a china cabinet. It could be it could be so many different things. So it's not really where it is as long as you have a place for the things. Okay, so the first suggestion I have for how to store all the things are bookshelves. I love me some bookshelves. We have so many all over our house. Raise your hand if you are a bookshelf hoarder like me and you always feel like you need more bookshelves, okay? Put it in the comments below. Let's talk about our hoarding problem, okay? <laughs> but I feel like I'm always like searching marketplace, consignment sales, all of the places for bookshelves because I feel like we can't get enough. Like we, we always need more bookshelves because we're always getting more books, which is a great thing. But also sometimes you gotta reel it in a little bit, right? But bookshelves come in handy for everything. I use them to store our books on obviously, but I use them to store everything else on too, like our printer and our supplies and just everything. You can put everything that you need for homeschooling on a bookshelf. You can find bookshelves cheap everywhere. You can get them cheap on Amazon, Walmart, Walmart, you can find them used on Marketplace, you can find them at yard sales, at consignment stores, everywhere. You can always find a cheap bookshelf. And so it makes it a great affordable way to organize all of your homeschool stuff. Okay, so the bookshelves in our house, we have five main bookshelves. We have some other like little ones spread around our house, but five main ones that we use for homeschooling. Two of them are downstairs in our homeschool room. And on those two shelves, I keep all of our reference books. So like our thesauruses and all of our history 
history type books. Not really our curriculum books, but books that have history topics in them, science, all of those kind of books are on those two shelves. Also our readers are also on those two shelves. And then I have a separate bookcase that I keep in a storage room that has all of my curriculum in there. And I have it organized as far as subject goes. So I have like all of my history books in one section, all my language arts books in one section. And I don't keep a ton of this stuff because some things are not reusable. I only keep the things that are reusable and that I think we might potentially reuse. So if it's a curriculum that we didn't like or I feel like we'll never use again, I will usually donate that or sell it. And then we have our most used bookshelf, which if you saw my video when we built these, you'll know the whole story behind them. But we have our main built-in bookshelves that sit in between our living room and our dining room. So those are kind of the main areas we homeschool right now. That shelf is where I house all of our curriculum books, all of the supplies that we need for homeschooling, just everything that we use day to day stays on that shelf. Also another great option are bookshelves that have doors on them because you can hide all of the stuff. So if you have kids that maybe you're not so organized with putting things back where they go or maybe it just stresses you out to see all of that stuff, then finding bookshelves that have doors on them might be a great option for you. Now you don't necessarily have to have bookshelves. You could use a rolling cart. You could use those cube organizers. You could use a storage cabinet like kind of like what I was just talking about. But I did want to talk about rolling carts for a minute because I think they are awesome for homeschooling, especially if you have a small space or especially if you need to do school in different areas of your house. A rolling cart can be so handy. It was so nice to have this when I was breastfeeding and I didn't really know where I would be nursing the baby at any given time. We could just kind of move that cart around the house as we needed to according to wherever I was going to be nursing the baby at that time. So rolling carts are great. I will try to link as many of these things that you're seeing on the screen as I can for you down below in the description box. So if you want a link to any of that, just tap on the link right there in the description box and hopefully you will be able to find anything that you need there. But another tip I have for you is to keep your reference materials close at hand. So my kids need to be able to access things like a Bible, a thesaurus, a dictionary, a globe constantly. So we keep those kind of things very close by in our homeschooling room so that we can grab those easily. But if it's something I know we're not going to use very often, I will keep that in another room of the house on a shelf of books that we don't use often. Also on our new homeschooling shelves, I have a few little shoe boxes that I got from Hobby Lobby for a few dollars. And inside those, I have things that we use a lot for our homeschool, like scissors and glue and tape and things like that. And that helps so much because I don't have to look at all of that junk because it's inside a pretty little black box, but I also can grab it really quickly and easily if I need to throw it on the table when we're about to start a craft. But the key with having things like this is your kids can use them, but they need to be sure that they put things back where they go. That is our biggest rule for things on this shelf because it is kind of in our living room. You can kind of see it. If we have guests, they see it. And so I like to make sure it stays nice and tidy so they kids know if they take things off of that shelf and really any of our shelves in our house are like this because I have a system and an order to things so they know if they take things off those shelves they need to put them back where they go and that just takes a little bit of training. Okay supplies. Sometimes this can be really stressful because you're like where do I put all of the pencils and the glue and the scissors and then just all of the things that you need for your homeschool day. Well you can actually keep these right on the table right in front of you. They make all kinds of really fun little storage units even ones with handles on them that you you can easily take to different rooms if you need to. You can keep all of your pencils and erasers and markers and pencil sharpeners and all of that right there that you can easily grab on your table. You could even use like little mason jars to store them in. But we love to have things close by like a stapler, a three hole punch, markers, crayons, highlighters, pencils, things like that stay very close by. Now one of my biggest tips on storing markers, crayons, colored pencils, all of those things is to get yourself a photo box. And I will put a picture here of how I do this, but it's just a little photo box that you get from, I got mine from Michael's. You can get them on Amazon too, but they have little individual compartments that you can pull out. And so inside each compartment, I have a different type of writing utensil. So one compartment will have markers, the other one will have crayons, the other one will have colored pencils. The other one might have even like math supplies. Like for my oldest, he doesn't use a lot of crayons. So for one of his compartments, he has things like a protractor and die and a little timer in there. So he has a little 
little bit different, but I have each child their own box and it has their name on it. And then each little individual compartment also has their initial on it. So we know whose markers are whose and it helps it makes my life so much easier because I don't know about you guys, but my kids are very territorial over their markers and their supplies. And so having this system just cuts down on the fights and the whining and the fussing and it helps so much. So highly recommend getting yourself some of these boxes. These boxes stay on our main homeschool shelf and usually at the beginning of the school day, they all pull it down their box, pull out what they need. And at the end of the day, they put it all back in their box and back on the shelf. And it works so great for us. And we have had no fights over markers since we started this. I think this will be our second year doing it. The sky is the limit as far as how to store all of these things, but you definitely want to make sure that they are within arm's reach. Okay, so curriculum storage. This can be a big concern. Where do we put all of the books? Because sometimes there's a lot of books depending on what curriculum you're using, but we love these wire bins from Target. We have had these, I think this might be our third year using them. They are so sturdy and they've held up perfectly. We've had no issues with them. They are sturdy. They are not not super heavy they are easy for the kids to grab because they have handles on them and we just love these so much I also bought these little clip-on labels from Amazon that you can put on the side and put their name on them they come with like little labels that you can just write on and stick in there but my friend made me some Cricut labels to put on them the, just with vinyl and so we love having these I use them for all of the kids curriculum as well as like I use, have a bin for myself that I keep like my teachers guides in and things like that and then I have another bin uh, that's just for like our morning time stuff so that's how we house all of the books that we use every day but I know a lot of people also love those little sterilite bins that are like this big and they have like the little clips on the side those kind of keep things a little bit neater because you can kind of pile the books on top of each other and then you can also stack those bins on top of each other so sometimes if you're short on space that might be a better option and I know a lot of people use that and that works great for them lots of different options for that but those are just some of my favorites okay so now that you've set your goals you've organized your space you've put things where they go maybe you're wondering okay what about like decor what about organizing the actual room and making it pretty and accessible so here is kind of the main things that you need in your homeschooling room you're going to want some kind of table now maybe this is desks for you for us we love our dining room table but whatever you want you're going to need some kind of surface for people to write on right but if you do do desks i would recommend that you get some with storage in them that helps so much now as far as decorations Okay, this is my thing with decorations. I want it to be pretty, but it also needs to be functional. So don't go crazy with the decorations. It's so tempting because there are some really fun, pretty homeschool decorations out there, but be sure that whatever you're bringing into your homeschool space, it has a purpose and it has a function because that will help so much with just your mental clutter. So for example, you could have chore charts on the wall of your room and maybe they're really cute from Canva. So they look pretty, but they're also very functional. Your kids need to look at those every day. They need to check off their chores. So that could be something that you do. Or maybe you get just a really pretty clock in there. Like we have a really pretty clock in our homeschool room, but like we need the clock because we stick to a schedule in our homeschool. So we need to know what time it is. So that's very functional. Maybe it's a really pretty globe because you can use that for geography, but it's also a really pretty decoration. Now I also love our homeschooling room to feel cozy and warm and inviting because my mom always did that for us growing up as homeschooled kids and I, it's just a memory that is ingrained into my mind and I just cherish those memories of when my mom we were doing school and I could smell freshly baked bread or she had a candle lit or some pretty music playing in the background or blankets spread throughout and so that's something I try to recreate for my kids is just a really cozy atmosphere so I'll set out blankets I'll turn a candle on I'll turn some music on. So just think of things like that too when you're thinking about your homeschooling space and environment. Now where do you put all the papers? That's a big question I get asked a lot and this can be tough and I wasn't quite sure how to do it at first but I think I found a system that works great for us at least so maybe this will help you but we use kind of a filing system. I have these bins that I bought on Amazon and it came with four. I have four kids. It worked out perfect and they are the kind of bins that you can hang file folders in. So I have a file folder for every grade for every child. So I just pick maybe 
40 of their best things and this can be like their work from the year so i also use it like for my records for my state um, but I also use it like for their fun memories, things that I know that they would probably want to keep. If it was a fun paper they wrote, if it was a cute little craft they made, I'll stick it in there. Now, I'm probably going to have to go through this every couple of years and take out more things because I already noticed my sixth grader, his bin is almost full. So I'm going to probably have to comb through his a little bit and scale it down a little bit, but it really works out so well. And I just keep these stored in a random like closet that we don't use at all in our house and I keep them stacked on top of each other and each one on the outside has each child's name on it now for my paperwork that I need to keep for my like memory's sake but also for our state laws I keep in a big accordion file folder and it's organized by year and so I put things in there like um, my kids attendance records how many days we went to school um, I keep exactly what we did every day in there so I just pull out the pages from my planner where I wrote down what we did each day I keep all of that in inside an accordion file folder that is organized per year and right now I've kept all of it so I, I people often ask me how long do you keep those things and I'm not totally sure the answer on that I would think like at least five years but it's been five years for us in homeschooling and I'm still keeping our stuff I'm thinking once my file folder fills up then I might start taking some things out but right now I have plenty of room so I'm not really worried about that and I don't keep a ton of stuff in each year either it's just it's strictly just what I need for my homeschooling laws and I really don't I think I said memorabilia things in there but I don't even keep stuff like that I keep the memorabilia stuff in the kids bins now throughout the year I have just a little basket that sits on a shelf downstairs so it's not even in our main homeschooling room but I keep a basket there of paperwork that I need to file away and I do this twice a year so in December and then at the end of the school year I will file it all the way in the kids bins but until then it all just stays in that basket in the homeschool room okay friends those are my top tips on how to organize your homeschool space I hope that that was helpful and inspired you and gave you some good ideas if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i would love for you to stick around and i will see you guys back here next time for another video bye friends mm -hmm.